Let's have a look in practice what it takes to calculate limits. So this is covered in section 3.7. We already had a look into the list, kind of the ranking order in which you should try methods. So let's say that we want to calculate this specific limit. If you look at the expression, it may appear relatively complicated. Some of you may think, well, maybe I should try factorizing or dividing by the highest power. Remember, you should really try to follow the list. And number one tells you to just sub in. So let's try this. Now in this case, subbing in works. That is because the function is actually continuous at this point. And it means that even though you may encounter a very complicated expression, that doesn't mean that taking the limit will be complicated. In this case, all you had to do is subbing in, plug in the values, there is nothing preventing you from getting the answer, which is an actual number, and the limit is one. Most cases, in most functions, this will just work. Of course, many limits will not be as easy as this, and you will have to go down the list, but it is important to point out that you should always try number one first, and only move down the list if you get something like zero over zero, or plus infinity over infinity, or something that you can't really calculate. Otherwise, subbing in and getting the answer will work. And ultimately, you should also remember that the other methods are meant to get you to a stage where you can then sub in and get the value. The other thing that's really important is to never forget about this operator. So in this case, I've actually calculated the value of the function at that point. So to actually get full marks, this would not be enough. What you need to say is that the limit when x goes to zero of x cubed x plus two over e to the power of x plus cos of x is equal to this value. So in this case, two over one plus one equals one. And it is very important that you spell out the steps that you use. So it is okay to, as a first step, to sub in separately from what you're doing and checking which value you get. If you get a value, it means this is true and you can write it down. If you get something like zero over zero, this is where you start manipulating the expression before you then go back to operating the limit into the expression. This will obviously become even clearer as we go to more complicated examples as the next one. Number two on the list of solving limits is factorizing. Now we've seen already an example like this before when we were calculating a specific limit. So that was the limit when x tends to one, x squared minus one over x minus one. Now, if you follow the list, number one will tell you to take this and sub in one. In this case, you would get one minus one over one minus one. This means you get something which is undefined. So it means number one will not solve it. You need to do something else. And in this case, because you are in the case of zero over zero, factorizing the expression will really help. We've already seen this example, but I wanted to put it in the context of going down the list. In this case, you can actually transform x squared minus one as x minus one times x plus one. 
And the reason why this is really helpful is because you can then write that the limit when x goes to 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 is the same as the limit when x goes to 1, x minus 1, x plus 1, divided by x minus 1. And the only case where this would be problematic is if the denominator equals 0. In this case, it doesn't equal 0 because it is a limit. It gets very close, but it doesn't. So it means that we can actually cancel this out. This just becomes the limit when x goes to 1 x plus 1 and in this case we can then sub in and we just get 1 plus 1 which is 2. So it means that the limit when x goes to 1 of the initial expression is 2 and the way we dealt with it is by factorizing it and into a term that we could cancel out. We can cancel it out because we're in the conditions it doesn't get to zero because it is a limit and then at some point we sub in and we get two. In some cases though this will not solve it and we'll see that similar expressions the only way to calculate it analytically will be to for example multiply and divide by a conjugate but we'll get there.